Pharmacotherapy, which can include things like methadone and buprenorphine, is an important therapeutic in intervention that can help people with opioid addiction issues. The benefit that it provides goes beyond people obtaining the medication, though, with reductions in crime and other benefits to the community. Things have been tough in Frankston, however, with a health clinic that provides significant pharmacotherapy support now set to close permanently later this month. This shouldn't have come as a shock, however, as the government scrambled to find solutions to a temporary closure late last year. My office has been contacted by people in the area concerned about the impacts of a dis disrupted service. So my question for the Minister is, what is the government doing to ensure that there isn't a dis disruption in support for patients of the Frankston Healthcare Medical Centre? Minister. Thank you, President, and I thank um, Mr Limbrick for his question, and I also thank you for your ongoing interest in these matters and the engagement that you've had with my office uh, over a number of months now. Um, and this is an important issue, uh, and I agree with you that um, it's very important treatment options that are there for people with um, serious opioid addiction. Uh, and of course, the situation in Frankston is something that uh, my department has been working very closely with the Commonwealth on. Um, you would be aware that, uh, of course, that funding of GP uh, pharmacotherapy treatments is uh, the responsibility of the Commonwealth. However, the Victorian government has wanted to ensure that there are no gaps in the services that are provided to a significant number of patients in the Frankston area through this particular um, GP closing. So we have been working closely with the Commonwealth uh, and also with the um, South Eastern Metropolitan Primary Health Network and our own health services in that um, part of uh, the city. Now, um, pleasingly, the Commonwealth Government has provided the clinic with additional funding so it can remain open for an additional four weeks while we work together with the Commonwealth on a more uh, enduring solution um, in Frankston. Uh, and we know that uh, there is a prescriber shortage nationwide, so that's why, in addition to the work that we're doing to find ongoing solutions in Frankston, uh, we're working alongside the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners um, and the Department of Health to offer free pharmacotherapy training for GPs so that we can um, build the number of GPs available across the state that uh, are able to prescribe. Um, the issue does remain uh, that many Commonwealth-funded GP clinics choose, uh, sadly, not to provide this kind of specialist addiction service. Um, so in addition to the Commonwealth efforts, we're also providing funding for surge capacity in Victoria to deal with the um, situation that we have such as the one in Frankston right now. Uh, we also have a broader $10 million investment to expand our pharmacotherapy services and address that service gap. Um, you'd be aware, I'm sure, Mr Limbrick, through your work uh, and advocacy in this space that a lot of our um, GPs that are in pharmacotherapy therapies are um, ageing, and so we need to really build that pipeline uh, of the uh, new generation of GPs uh, and nurse practitioners to be able to do this important work into the future. And it's something that I um, ha have got a focus on, uh, making sure that we're doing that work to build that pipeline. Mr Limbury, supplementary. Uh, thank you. Thank you, President. And I thank the Minister for her response. Um, I, I, I hope that um, whatever happens, it happens soon because we're really running out of time. Um, my supplementary question is, during the temporary closure last year, my office heard many harrowing stories of how this affected people, stories of people getting back on heroin, significant medical mental health episodes in the streets, and other people committing criminal offences. This has the potential to create an ongoing crisis for the people of Frankston and the clients of the health service. But pharmacotherapy, of course, as the minister has mentioned, is one of those areas where there's responsibility at a federal and state level, and probably there's a bit of buck passing going on, and probably that has a lot to do with some of the problems that we've got now. Beyond the immediate crisis in Frankston, there is a system strain to breaking point. However, there is hope, because in this chamber, there's apparently zero opposition to expanding pharmacotherapy options, and the government has indicated that they're considering this. What is the government doing in the space of expanding the, the uh, number of pharmacotherapy options, such as hydromorphone, which was discussed uh, last year in this parliament? Yeah. Minister. 
Uh, thank you, President, uh, and I thank uh, Mr Limbrick for his supplementary, and I think I did go to some of those issues in my answer to the substantive question um, that you put. Um, this is an incredibly important uh, part of our uh, AOD response for people who uh, struggle with opioid addiction, and I completely agree with you that we do not want a situation where people are uh, lapsing uh, um, as a result of uh, lack of access to pharmacotherapy. So I think um, I, I have said in my, in my previous answer, and I'll reiterate, that this is a focus for the government to make sure that we're working closely with the Commonwealth. Um, but it's not a quick fix. It does require uh, a systemic approach, and that's something that I'm very um, happy to keep engaging you with. Uh, and give you progress updates on that work, Mr Limbrick. Being a libertarian is sometimes described as like being the only sober person in the car and no one will let you drive. The government is driving us into the dark. 